Hello, welcome to everyone. I am Lia Shortino, uh, director of uh, Sea Junction, and I am very glad to meet some old friend here and some new friend uh, to discuss a very important topic about migration from uh, women migration from Vietnam to the world. And actually, this is uh, two episodes. So the first will be a general and the next episode will talk more about migration from Vietnam uh, to Europe. Uh, this is part of a collaboration we have with the Global Alliance Against Trafficking of Women and I see Borislav uh, here with us and we have already, it's a series of six episodes and we have already had a general uh, overview of the issue about the migration uh, channel and route from uh, Southeast Asia to Europe. And now we are going more in depth into different countries. Uh, first will be Vietnam, then we will have Thailand and then also Philippines. Uh, so without further ado, let me introduce uh, Kwak Tu Ong. Uh, sorry for misspelling the name, but I think she is one of the leading expert about uh, social issue uh, generally, but migration in particular uh, in Vietnam and also beyond of uh, Vietnam. She is very well renowned. I don't think she needs much uh, introduction. And she is here uh, with a colleague, uh, Bao An, uh, who I am pleased to meet uh, today. And they will be discussing first a general overview of migration from Vietnam. And then uh, what made me interested into uh, inviting them, besides having occasion to see an old friend, was also uh, to the book that they have recently uh, launched, which you can find on the website. We will also share uh, the link to the book, which, as you will see, is a very uh, interesting compilation of stories of uh, migrant women themselves, uh, their experience, positive and negative about going abroad. So please, on. Yeah, thank you so much, Leah. Um, yeah, I'm very happy to be uh, in a meeting today to share um, a piece of our work on, on migration. So Leah just mentioned, uh, Leah just mentioned, um, our work in uh, migration. So I, I would like also to share with you that Leah's, uh, when she uh, worked um, as the director of uh, Rockefeller Foundation office in uh, Southeast Asia, she supported us to do a piece of work on, on migration. It's very, very beginning of our, our, our work uh, on migration. So uh, we, uh, so that is like a brick. Uh, like a foundation for our continue uh, working on, on migration uh, topic since then. Um, so as Leah mentioned today, <clears throat> uh, we uh, would like to share with you about, uh, actually the, the, our focus is about, about the book um, that's compiling story of uh, migrant women uh, to a uh, different country, but um, uh, but before uh, before going to the content of the book, as my colleague Bao Ang will share with you, uh, I would like to give uh, like a, a very short overview about the um, uh, history of migration uh, in Vietnam. Uh, so so you have a, like a, 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 a picture about the uh, migration in Vietnam, and then we we go. Uh, to more detail uh, on our most recent uh, work on migration. Um, please, the next slide, Bao Ang. Uh, so, um, yeah, just a few slides. I would like to uh, share with you about a brief history of international labor uh, migration from Vietnam. You may know that Vietnam is the country that uh, People <clears throat> migrating migrate out a lot, uh, given our um, very complex uh, history. But uh, we focused uh, our work mostly on the 
labor migra migration rather than other type of migration. We, uh, we have some time to work on the marriage migration as well, but uh, our major focus uh, is about the labor migration. So I, what we talk, uh, what you are talking today is about labor migration. Um, okay, so uh, just just very, very few slides about the uh, migration from Vietnam during the colonial period. Actually, uh, we used to be a colonial of French from the second half of the 19th century until the uh, first, uh, until the 1954. Uh, so um, during this, Period. Uh, I think it's very first uh, Vietnamese uh, migra um, people uh, migrate uh, to work uh, abroad for for money. So um, the main destination at that time uh, was New Caledonia, uh, which was the French col colony, uh, and then. Uh, I think there may be other uh, source of information, but so far we got, we could dig only just very limited uh, source of information regarding the migration of Vietnamese people during this uh, particularly uh, particular periods. So about 20,000 worker, Vietnamese worker, including exile prisoner, um, uh, work uh, abroad, but mainly in New Caled Caledonia, as I as you see in in the on the screen. So you see that men work in a chrome or nickel uh, mine. Women uh, work uh, in in uh, in a plantation. Uh, the number of women working uh, among the migrants from Vietnam at the time is very very small number. Uh, I think um, uh, about few hundreds only. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, uh, so during the socialist periods from 1980 to 1990, uh, altogether uh, about uh, um, 200, almost 280,000 Vietnamese workers went to work in uh, in the socialist country like uh, Soviet Union, East Germany, Czechoslovakia, Bulgaria, Hungary. So, um, so from the left um, graph, you, you you see the number, uh, the 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 big tie uh, with the largest number around almost 20, uh, seventy-two thousand uh, Vietnamese worker uh, is uh, within the. 1987, 1989, and then it dropped uh, sharply uh, by uh, 1990, and uh, and particularly after the uh, collapse of socialist bloc, uh, Vietnamese workers no longer sent to to those countries anymore. But we we were moved to send our worker to other country to Middle East, for example, to Iraq. Um, so about 14,000 uh, construction workers worked to Iraq uh, during 1990. So when it happened, the, uh, the, 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 uh, the conflict in, in the gun uh, uh, area, Vietnam had to send, um, had to rescue our worker from Iraq. Um, so, uh, so that is about the, the history, and uh, we also send our expert, not worker, but expert with uh, like a high skill uh, uh, expert to Libya, Algeria, Angola, and, and uh, Mozambique. Uh, in the uh, on on the screen in the uh, right side is the Vietnamese worker working in East Germany uh, during eight, 1980. Uh, next slide, please. So um, you may know that the Vietnam uh, adopted the uh, renovation policy in 1986. 
So that's the periods uh, from that period we name is the renovation area in Vietnamese, Doi Mới area. So from uh, 1990 to present, uh, we uh, send our uh, worker to work in many different countries, uh, but the uh, majority are um, um, uh, North, uh, East, East Asia, uh, East Asian country like uh, uh, South Korea, uh, Japan, Taiwan, uh, and some uh, Southeast Asia country like uh, Malaysia. Um, uh, so you, you see here with some information, the number of Vietnamese workers uh, work uh, overseas uh, from 1992 to actually to um, 2020. You see that the largest number we send uh, in uh, 2019, so almost uh, 157 uh, workers. Uh, but uh, it's dropped uh, sharply in 2020 due to the COVID. Um, and, but the number is getting up again uh, as, uh, as we got information from our government that the Vietnam tried to send uh, more people uh, right after COVID. Um, so where where they are uh, um, where uh, actually uh, how much the, how many people in different countries you can see here uh, Japan is largest Taiwan as well Taiwan and Japan uh, are the destination where Vietnamese people uh, uh, migrate to work uh, with the largest number uh, Thailand uh, why we have no uh, agreement with Thailand but still. Many Vietnamese people come to Thailand to work. Uh, um, we call them irregular worker or uh, actually the illegal. Um, um, so uh, here you see the the income, the monthly income, average monthly income that the uh, Vietnamese worker earn in Taiwan, in Japan, in 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 South Korea, in, in Saudi Arabia as well. So, um, uh, for example, in Taiwan, <coughs> uh, the monthly income is the um, Vietnamese dong 16 million. So it's about, um, for the current <coughs> exchange rate, it's about uh, 750 uh, US dollar. Uh, so in Japan, uh, worker earn more of about uh, 1,150 uh, uh, US dollar. Uh, it's similar in, in, uh, in, in South Korea. In Saudi Arabia, uh, um, they earn less, least, yeah, only about four, 400 uh, US dollar. Uh, okay, next slide, please. Um, so um, here are some key uh, uh, key uh, figure as you can see. So since two thousand five, um, on average, uh, um, about eighty thousand worker sent abroad uh, from Vietnam annually. Um, by two thousand seventeen. Um, about half a million of Vietnamese the worker uh, working uh, in 40 uh, different country. The so remittances uh, in 2017, it's about uh, the, uh, almost 14 billion US dollar uh, constituting uh, over 6% uh, of Vietnamese GDP. But uh, remittances in, in 2019 uh, is about uh, seven, more than 17 billion. So among those 17 billion, the Vietnamese worker who's, uh, who work abroad sent back home uh, around uh, 3 billion US dollar. Uh, but uh, one of the... Um, uh, feature that we often highlight when talking about the uh, labor migration from Vietnam is the share of low skin labor. It's very, very large. Um, 
Uh, and, and thus make Vietnam a major source of unskilled labor uh, to high income country in East Asia. Next slide, please. Uh, regarding the labor uh, export policy from Vietnam, there's the there's, um, interesting uh, changes, as you can see. Um, in the period from 1980 uh, to 1990, uh, Vietnamese uh, policy regarding labor export uh, uh, focused uh, to paying the debt to socialist brother country because we uh, we get the debt from them and then we send our worker to work there as the uh, form of paying back the 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 loan. Uh, from 1991 to 2007, um, um, labor export policy um, considers important and uh, in it's among long-term socioeconomic development strategy. The Vietnamese government see uh, labor export uh, is the source of uh, income and also uh, the source of, uh, uh, how to say, um, technology and in, in high skill uh, upon the worker returning to the country. Um, uh, from 2008 to 2016, um, the, uh, the government of Vietnam see labor export as a mean to alleviate poverty. So uh, the government put uh, the objective to send uh, um, 120,000 poverty stricken worker abroad between 2009 and 2020. So um, um, the program sending uh, Vietnamese worker abroad uh, at that time, at that time period, um, expanded to poor district of Vietnam. Uh, ethnic minority, poor people are encouraged to to join the 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 um this program to go uh, working abroad. So um with this policy those who who want to to go to work abroad can get a, a, a loan uh, with a very very low interest or even no uh, interest. So that's uh, uh, special um, encouragement uh, uh, entitled is entitled for for poor poor people who who want to go abroad. Uh, from 2017, the government of Vietnam um, uh, changed the policy regarding the labor export because the Vietnam. <laughs> was no have been known as the source of low skin labor uh, so our government doesn't like it anymore so they want to send um, um, high skill uh, worker abroad uh, with the aim that uh, uh, we earn uh, more um, um, currency and uh, and uh, uh, Hopefully, the, the, the worker who work abroad uh, for a while would come would become a source uh, of, the, of the skin workforce uh, for uh, contributing contributing to build and industrialize and modernize Vietnam. Um, yeah, next slide. Um, yeah, so it's some picture uh, here. We have a poster in in uh, many areas of Vietnam with a with a slogan with a with a message: If you want to escape poverty, join labor export. Uh, that's in the in the left the the poster. Uh, on the on the right, you see the big house. Uh, that's uh, portrays as the result of, of working abroad. So. Um, the government try to encourage the poor people um, to go abroad to escape poverty and, and earn money and go back to build a big house and beautiful house like this. Uh, 
Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, so as I mentioned, people in poor district uh, going to work abroad are entitled to 100% of uh, preventional loan. Um, that is the policy during uh, 2009, 2009 to 2016. Uh, next slide, please. I think I finished my, my, oh yes, just last line of my part. Um, yeah, women proportion among international labor migrant is increasing over time. You can see uh, from the very little uh, small percentage in uh, during 1990, uh, the number of women joining uh, international labor migration is increased. Uh, and now uh, um, the female um, worker uh, account is account accounted for about um, 35, 38% uh, of the total um, um, migrant worker uh, from Vietnam. Next slide. Oh. Mm. No, uh, skip this. Uh, I, I think you 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 use the 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 old, old one. Uh, okay, so um, I think I stop here. We uh, we will move to uh, to another um, another part of our uh, our uh, talk today. You may want to have a question about the the first part. Uh, uh, of our presentation, or you want to wait until the end? Yes, maybe we wait until the next presentation first, unless okay. there are some uh, clarification. Is okay. anyone interested in? If not, yes, we go to the next uh, presentation. Thank okay. you very much. Okay, so I think I will. Bao uh, I will show uh, the slide, the version that I I have. You still use the old one. Okay, I show, uh, uh, oh, host only. Can you share? Okay, uh, sorry, I um, I show it now. Um, sorry, sorry. Okay, so while we wait, <gasps> there is any interesting uh, question? Here it is, sorry. Okay. Yeah, if you if you still uh, don't have any question regarding oh, the, the yeah. deep history, so we go to the next uh, part. Uh, it's about the book. So Bao Ang is uh, your flow. Yes, please, Anne. I found a new slide here. Would you like to share it, Ms. Hong? I share, I share. You, do, do you see it? No? No, we don't oh, see oh. it. Oh, sorry. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> uh, because I am not allowed to, to share, right? Did you give permission to share? Uh, yes, you should be able. You should be able. Why I cannot share? I cannot share. Oh, I cannot share. Um, um, well, I do have the the. I send. Um, well, I you 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 check the last slide I sent last night or this morning. In Zalo. Uh, this is the, the latest one. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I send it now. Because there's some slide that I think that we, we don't have enough time to, to share. So that's why I, 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 it's no show 
but it's in 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 yeah. the uh, which which slide oh, so like press to... go directly to now go direct directly to the book yeah anyway we we okay. show the slide yeah yeah just go to the book now oh yeah uh, thank you uh, for everyone for being here today and uh, after Ms. Ms. Hong has introduced the uh, background of uh, Vietnam migrations over the history, uh, I'm very honored to present the work of our team. Uh, it's a, a book that we introduce the stories that are written by the Vietnamese women migra migrants themselves um, to uh, uh, record and share about their journey and their experience when they migrate to um, countries um, outside Vietnam. And this book was uh, done uh, last, uh, uh, this February. Uh, the book is a collection of uh, uh, over 70 unique stories told by 400 women who participated in our project. Uh, the woman from had the province, one of the provinces that has the highest number of uh, migrations. Um, the destinations that these women uh, migrated to mainly are Thailand, China, Taiwan, Japan. Uh, some also migrate to Angola, uh, Saudi Arabia, and uh, a few are starting to migrate to European countries like Germany um, <clears throat> and uh, Romania and Russia, but not many. Um, but um, uh, the younger generations, um, they are having a trend to migrate more to European countries because um, these are the more expensive um, uh, receiving countries. And uh, before, when a uh, people doesn't have much money, uh, they migrate themselves through irregular channels, mainly to these destinations. And the main occupations that they do include waitress at restaurants, steward, uh, washing dishes, domestic workers, especially in Taiwan and, and uh, uh, Japan and China, uh, factory workers, uh, mainly in Taiwan and Japan, construction workers at, uh, as um, in uh, informal, informal sectors, uh, some do farm work in Taiwan or in Japan, or as a nurse <clears throat> who take care of children, elderly, and patients, especially those with serious conditions. Um, and so the main uh, sectors of the book we divide uh, based on um, the chronicle timeline of the journey that the women been through. Uh, it begins with how, like, what are the motivations that make them want to migrate? Um, their first journey uh, traveling to a strange country for the first time, uh, their working conditions in these countries, the, the language barrier uh, that they faced, um, also uh, uh, special sections dedicated to experience regarding gender-based violence that these women face when working in foreign country. Um, about pregnancies and healthcare is also a uh, highlighted uh, content, uh, as well as because most of the, these women migrate through irregular channels, mean that they are not protected by the legal system, uh, both at the sending and receiving countries. Uh, and that's why there are many stories of encountering the police, as well as being sent into detention camp especially in Thailand. And uh, the challenge of COVID to migrants, women working abroad. And finally, their way home and how they are rebuilding life in the homeland after uh, these uh, journey. And um, these are the key content that we want to highlight from the stories of uh, over 400 um, women. And uh, first, uh, we want to introduce the key motivations or reason why these women uh, have decided to, to start their journey abroad. Um, so you can see that the main reason here are being unskilled labor. Uh, so at home, they couldn't find a job with enough income to sustain the livelihood of their family. 
and they decide to go for a, a better income to escape poverty like Miss Hong has introduced uh, because the life in the province with many migrants are very precarious. Uh, they mostly do uh, work in agriculture with very unstable income. And uh, some go to pay off debts and help uh, with the financial condition of the family. Some uh, contribute the money from migrations for their parents to uh, rebuild uh, new houses and, or treat illness. And uh, many goes with the mindset that I will sacrifice uh, my life so that my children will have a better future from the income, the higher income that I get from migrations. Um, that is why they give the best uh, and uh, try to endure injustice as well as gender-based violence when they were working abroad. And um, in the end, many people uh, state the conclusions that it's, it's all just for the sake of rise and money is a phrase in Vietnamese um, that in English you may use the phrase bread and butter. So it's, for, it's all for livelihood and income and mostly goes because they feel like they have no other economic feasible choice if they stay. <laughs> uh, regarding the journey that they have to go through to reach uh, the destination is very challenging and dangerous um, because they have to go through a regular channel um, hiding from uh, the border guard and the police and some go on the tourist visa to Thailand. That's why they have to, to uh, hide themselves throughout the journey. And if, uh, if any accidents or risk happening along the way, there is no protection mechanism available for them. Uh, for example, a woman shared that when she crossed the border to China, she had to sit in the basement of a truck for 10 hours. And when she got out, her limbs were all sore and numb. And it took her three days uh, resting at her sister house in China to recover in order to be able to, to be healthy enough to work again. And then uh, some share that um, a, a, young, a young girl shared that when she migrated, she was only 18. And she was pushed into a car, sat on top of each other and taken to the dormitory. So it, it feels like human trafficking, but uh, they do not dare to, to ask for help. And there were nobody for them to ask for help during this situation, if they were actually trafficked. And in this situation, when they are later exploited, uh, most of the time is actually a case of human trafficking. And uh, regarding the working conditions, um, the key occupations, um, the, the majority of the occupations that these migrants uh, took up uh, are first uh, domestic workers, uh, especially in Taiwan and Saudi Arabia. <clears throat> and the working conditions, um, this is the general uh, situations for everybody, very long working hours uh, because normally they have to work in a family with uh, many people serving many people at a time uh, with the uh, elderly or people with serious uh, illness. Uh, and their work uh, can start from 4 a.m. until 10 p.m. in the evening. But um, the meal was very, um, uh, very the, the quality of the meals was very poor. And they also face risk of violence. For example, a woman shared that uh, her work started from 4 a.m. to 10 p.m. Uh, the boss also beat her and starved her. There were many days when she didn't have any enough food. And she, um, because of that, she feels really, really uh, pity for herself. And she, uh, she eats with tears. Uh, the, the tears uh, kind of mix with the food that make it hard for her to swallow uh, the, the very little food that she had. And then <clears throat> they forced her to work the whole day. She didn't get, me get meals properly. Uh, often she wouldn't have breakfast, but only get half a bowl of rice without any other food except a boiled egg at 2 p.m. Uh, and every day was like that. And uh, some also face uh, uh, accusations uh, without any protections uh, and risk of 
uh, losing their income or even being locked up. For example, a case here, uh, the employer once left his wallet at the company, but he blamed um, the help, which is um, the woman, for stealing it. And when the broker came, he wanted to blame it all on me, the woman here. So he would receive the compensation of not paying for my service for a year. Uh, he made me sign a contract and all sorts of stuff. I was cut off from all connections, so there was nobody I could reach. Uh, so she was basically locked up against her will. Uh, I told him that I surely didn't take it. After a while, he found his wallet and the broker asked him to apologize to me. And he, he said, I, and I said I didn't take his wallet, but he continued to stalk me. And I couldn't contact anyone, so there was nothing I could do. So imagine if the, this boss hasn't found his wallet, then she, wouldn't, she would continue to be locked up, wouldn't receive her income. And even the broker came, they didn't protect her. Uh, in this situation as well. And uh, regarding the working conditions of domestic workers in Saudi Arabia, the pictures is even more uh, devastating. Uh, on, uh, one woman shared, only after working here, you can see how cruel it is behind the lavish parties. Uh, on, on one hand, people in the splendid clothes happily immersed in pleasure. Uh, on the other hand, there are the, the dusty workers winded in arranging, cleaning, cooking, washing dishes, doing laundry. Um, there are days when I had to work for 15 hours, prepare meals for the endless parties, soak my hands in bleach fields sinks until uh, I, your hands can't bend due to chemicals. Uh, working without break, only eating bread. Many times I walked to the exhaustions and would pass out. The employers would have to take me to the hospital. Hospital. The boss said to me, if you are alive, you walk. If you are dead, your body will be thrown to the desert. So they are seen as walking machine and objects rather than living human being uh, without any rights, without any protections, without any um, uh, basic uh, human affections. And the boss, uh, told the woman who exhausts from work and hospitalized that if, if she died, he will throw her body to the desert. Uh, so the law in Saudi Arabia doesn't protect the life and uh, well-being of um, migrant worker at all, especially when these migrants migrate through irregular channels. Uh, regarding uh, the working conditions of factory workers, mainly the story of from Taiwan, and, and Thailand is the same story of exploitations of long working hours in very poor conditions. Uh, so one woman in Thailand shared that um, that year she was working as a garment worker in a small factory in Bang Bong, Bang Bong province. The daily hours was from 6 a.m. to 12 p.m. the first shift, the second shift from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m., and the third shift from 6 p.m. to 12 p.m. So she only gets uh, six hours of sleep throughout the whole day. And there were days when the owner even forced them to work until 3 a.m. Very long working hours, but the salary was low. And every working day is stressful, not to mention the, the delay pavement. And one woman working in, in a textile factory uh, in, in Taiwan, they shared that the machines only had Chinese letters, so, so she couldn't read them. So it was really hard to learn the job. Even with the smallest mistake, they would threaten to send her home. Uh, my first day at work was, was eight hours, but the remaining days I didn't finish until um, if I didn't work for 12 to 16 hours, I wouldn't be let home. So the uh, language training for the workers were very minimum. Uh, they only received maybe one month of learning the language, or in other case, uh, not have any preparation at all. And they have to adapt right away into the working situation there, competing with people who are already fluent in their mother tongue and work very long hours and doesn't have the language to negotiate their working condition or, or contract.
Uh, one woman shares that she only had two days off in a month. The work was hard, as others, uh, she had to stand a whole day. Even during breaks, she would have to find a replacement and take turns because they couldn't turn off the machines. So when they finished a meal, they had to rush back to the station immediately so the replacement could take turn to have lunch. Um, and their uh, living condition is no better. Uh, evening at the dorms were unpleasant. Small rooms packed with people, hot, sometimes so hot that they couldn't sleep. And the, um, to the toilet um, facilities there were not uh, private enough. And they have to take turn to guard the door if they want to take a shower. Um, and um, also regarding workers, uh, being unpaid by boss were not uncommon. Uh, so one woman shared that she worked for the owners for five months and they never paid her salaries. They only gave them food and they did not, they did not let us out of the house all day long. On Sundays, the owners would, co would, would come to the factory. So they locked us inside and bought a few packets of instant noodles to eat. So they are basically like prisoners. They couldn't go out. They only stay inside and work without even getting paid. Um, the work was hard. Working time was long. The salary was poor, only 4 million Vietnam dong a month back then, maybe about 10 years ago. But minus the rent, there was only 3 million dong left. And on top of that, I was bullied by the owners when many times my pay was delayed, they didn't want to pay me, not until I nagged them over and over again. So there is no mechanism to ensure that they will get paid, um, especially people who go through the regular channel. Uh, I know there were, so this is one woman who had a, an official contract to go to work in Taiwan. So she go through four more channels. Um, but she said that, I know there were people who didn't voice up their loss, but there were also those who didn't know how to calculate their workload, leaving them clearly disadvantaged, working abroad for nearly 10 years. And if they didn't know the law, they could lose at least nearly 200 million in insurance money. So this worker, she found out that the employers didn't pay any insurance money that she's supposed to receive. And she uh, raised her voice. Uh, for many, many times until she received this money, but she knows that many of her colleagues didn't know about this, this, this cap money. And the boss, as well as the broker, were working in alliance to hide the fact that there are this insurance money that's supposed to pay to the worker, but many didn't know about this. Uh, regarding gender-based violence, uh, especially women, they face very high risk of violence because of being women uh, working abroad. <clears throat> and um, if you encounter uh, an incident of gender-based violence, very few people would understand you, uh, let alone protect you. Um, one woman shared that uh, when she couldn't take it anymore, means exhaustion from work. She hid in the bathroom and took a nap for five minutes, but unfortunately the manager caught her he intended to harass her, but luckily an employee came in just in time. So the, the manager accused her of enticing him, making the, the restaurant staff to gossip, harass, and humiliate her. And she was feeling helpless, ashamed, and traumatized for a while. Um, another story. He said that at first the guests only told tea to pour the wine, but after sitting down, they forced tea to drink and also had improper actions like touching her legs, hands, hugging her. Tea disagreed and got right up to leave the table. And when the boss asked her to explain why she left the table, tea told her side of the story, thinking that the owner would understand. But to her surprise, the owner said that the broker brought tea here to work and already took the fee, which means he must work here and satisfy whichever request of the customers. So she was working in a, a liquor store and by the words of her boss, she is literally sold, um, sold into the liquor store and have to do anything and request by, by the customers. 
Um, another story of gender-based violence of women working as domestic worker in, in Taiwan. In 2003, Anna went to Taiwan to nurse an elderly couple. The 80 kilograms of women had polio. On the bright day, she also had to go help their children working on the field. When she got home from work at night, the 71-year-old pervert man kept asking to touch her, asked her to take off her clothes and sleep with him and so on. And she refused him outright. So after that, she kept he kept looking for excuse to give her a hard time, cursing and tormenting her. She really wanted to return home, but because of her loan, she had to keep tolerating him to earn money and pay off her debts. The relentless work day and night was already exhausting. And there was uh, a day when he kept rumbling and nagging and she was no longer in her right mind. So she was so annoyed that she made a deal to take off her clothes for him to see once. And then he must never ask her about this again. He nod, yes, yes, but then old habit die hard and he started harassing her again after a week or so. So Anna lost five kilograms since coming to Taiwan and she couldn't stand the situation anymore. She, was, she had no other way but to leave the country. This means that she might not be paid and unable to pay off her loan. And please, can you round that? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, so yeah. regarding uh, pregnancy and health. Thank you. Yeah, uh, thank you for reminding. Uh, so you can read the details of the story here um, later on. But the key point is that um, the woman had to uh, give birth at home because they couldn't go to the hospital because they don't have any documents. They are afraid of being detained by the police. And they are also afraid of being um, sacked by the boss. So they hide their pregnancy until they couldn't hide anymore. And during the, the months of pregnancy, they have to work at the same time with the same workload at normal people with no healthcare checkup or better nutrition um, or, or diet. And, and some people, when they got into detention camp, they have to give birth inside the detention camp. And uh, there is a section that describe the um, the condition the living condition of people who have to stay at detention camp, uh, and it was very miserable because uh, they don't have any documents. And during COVID, the police start to um, do a lot of checkup, and uh, the people were riled up and were put into detention camp because there was no one uh, to uh, bail them out or buy them uh, uh, airplane ticket to go home. So they have to stay there. And the condition was uh, very harsh. And there were also pregnant women staying in the detention camp for months, sleeping on the floor, packed with 100 or 200 people in a small room. And some even went crazy uh, because of these conditions, not to mention uh, violence inside the camp. Uh, and also, there were very many challenges posed to the worker from COVID-19. First is that they lost all kind of income. Um, so they have to take a, a huge loan to prepare for their migration uh, trip abroad. But when they arrive, they immediately lost their job. So they have no way to pay off the debts uh, as well as the loan that they have before. Um, not to mention to sustain their livelihood. Uh, they are stuck in the foreign country. They couldn't go home. They couldn't see their family. And some people, uh, were uh, the, the boss didn't want them to stay inside the house because fear of COVID. So they have to stay outside um, in the park alone by themselves all night because the boss are fear that they might contract COVID to them. Uh, but uh, the only uh, sections that show hope and promise is when the women migrate back home and they use what the skill they have learned the confidence through the years that they have um, living alone in a foreign country, as well as um, uh, the money that they accumulate through their work to rebuild life at home. And women have shared that after 10 years of being away from the family, upon the return, um, the, her, the family economic situation was much more stable and she earned a lot of respect, both from the family as well as the community because of um, 
her ability to be economically independent and her contribution to the family. Uh, some receive training, uh, become more mature in life, learn to be independent, as well as uh, learn to create uh, um, newer uh, um, goods so that um, her mindset and skills in sewing and, and tailoring lead to a new life uh, in, at, at home where she, she had a small startup doing uh, sewing work. Uh, so in conclusions, our key message when we want to publish this book is that uh, we want societies and families recognize and appreciate the contributions of uh, the long year working of these migrant women because their story are often go untold and hidden uh, from both the family and society, especially when they go through irre irregular channels. Their contributions are never published or uh, recognized uh, in the narratives of the government as well, even though it happened as the, the fastest growing GDP in the whole country, one of the fastest but the contribution of these women who migrate through irregular channels are never mentioned in uh, um, these growing or the buildings of house and facilities in heaven. And the story of the books, we hope also uh, provide valuable lessons for those who want to migrate abroad. So they are aware of all the risks um, that might, they might face when going abroad because they might go with the promise of a better life, better income, and rarely do the brokers or any company, private company who introduce the work to them, um, give them training or, or notice them about this risk. And it is hoped that through these book policies and programs on international labor migration will be improved uh, so that women will have more opportunities as well as choice for safe and effective labor migration, especially women who doesn't have uh, a lot of uh, quality who doesn't have a good education background or skills, or doesn't have a lot of money to go to um, to go through formal channel or really expensive uh, destination, for example, and that the government from um, most the sending and receiving countries can find a way to have a um, agreement and collaborations to have to provide protection mechanisms in the law for for migrants who have the needs uh, to work abroad because these receiving countries are also having uh, the demands for workers from Vietnam, but they are yet to provide enough protections and legal framework to provide protections for the workers. Uh, so these are the key message from the books. And uh, thank you for being uh, patient and uh, listening to the stories that we share. Thank you very much. And sorry to both speakers, I think, uh, they are such important story and information that would deserve much more time uh, to discuss, but we still want to give some time uh, to, uh, to the participant to ask their question. And we have received already quite a lot of questions. So mm -hmm. we will do a round. I will mention uh, and see what you can answer together. Uh, so the first question is, could the speaker elaborate on the pull factors specifically to Japan and Taiwan? So what are the pull factors for these two countries and if there is any difference for women and men, uh, migrants and experience? Uh, then you get uh, quite some compliment about the amazing collection of a uh, story of these very powerful and brave stories and uh, everyone look forward to reading uh, more of this. Uh, there is a question about please help clarify uh, whether the story are only from irregular uh, women migrants or there were also regular uh, migrants and whether they were uh, more protected the regular than the regular or in the end both of them encountered a similar uh, story. I am elaborating here on the question being uh, asked. Uh, then about experience, this is from Mariko Ayashi, which we hope to have as a speaker in the next uh, as, uh, next event or in other events. And uh, she is asking about uh, that you mentioned about ethnic minority and how they were encouraged uh, to migrate uh, in the past at the least. 
through her work in Japan and the UK, she has become aware that the majority uh, of recent workers from Vietnam often come from the same uh, region, from the same uh, community. So it seems that those workers have less opportunity than others. Maybe this is a little bit of a sensitive issue, but basically to better understand whether for this specific group of people it's more difficult to find uh, decent uh, work. Uh, also about uh, the issue of racism, and this is the last uh, question we have received, is uh, about in the receiving country, uh, uh, the women encounter issue of racism. Uh, what can be done by this host country to address uh, this issue? We know that in the States and other, there is a lot of anti-Asian uh, feelings, uh, mm -hmm. but racism is rife everywhere, unfortunately. So what can be done uh, about from the point of view of the woman? So this is the one uh, we have received. I want to give a chance to uh, Bobby uh, from Get Away. If you have any question to ask, Do you want to add? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't want to take up too much time, but yeah, I was wondering if you have plans or uh, to share these uh, these stories with the government or with the communities, because these were among your conclusions that you would like policies to change to make migration uh, better, and you would like uh, potential migrants to uh, also to hear these stories. So whether you have, let's say, an advocacy uh, plan. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, so I think you have a lot uh, to answer. It is uh, raised a lot of interest. So please go ahead. Okay, thank you so much uh, for the questions. Very interesting question and important as well. Um, let's, uh, yeah, we will uh, try to to respond as uh, much as the, uh, possible. Um, <clears throat> both Bao Anh and I will, will try, but I may go first with the first question about the pool uh, factor to Japan and Taiwan. Um, Japan, um, South Korea and Taiwan are most desirable destination for Vietnamese the migrant worker because the income are higher, uh, working condition um, relatively better in general. Uh, and uh, those countries are, are perceived among the migrant workers are more advanced in terms of culture, in terms of lifestyle, more uh, modernized. Uh, so, uh, so, so they are three, those three countries are most desirable destination. Uh, Vietnamese, the uh, potential worker, sometimes have to pay a lot of money in order to go to Japan, to South Korea, and to Taiwan. A few years ago, uh, for example, uh, in order to go to Japan, uh, some people have to pay as, as much as the 10,000 or even 15,000 US dollar uh, because, uh, because those countries are, are, are most desirable. So there's a lot of layer in terms of broker, you know, uh, so many layers. So uh, every, in each, on each labor, some money, amount of money is added. So, so that's why the potential worker have to, to pay a lot of money in order uh, for them to, to, to be able to, to go. Uh, and to Japan, you know that Japan policy or they name the program uh, uh, training, is training rather than, you know, uh, just a, a worker, uh, worker, those who go to Japan, uh, entitled as trainee or uh, uh, intern, not worker. So some somehow the status is higher, and they earn more. Uh, they earn more. They pay more, but they earn more. And um, and going to Japan, to South Korea, to Taiwan, 
um, uh, bring a higher status for for the migrants. So that's why um, those uh, three countries are most desirable. So the pooling factor is about you know income, about the uh, um, the country are more advanced, the working condition are better. Um, going to Japan and South Korea, there's no not much. To, um, there's no irregular channel for them to go. Uh, why um, some worker may broke, uh, break the 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 contract and and go out to work, so they work irregularly, yeah, illegal. But uh, from Vietnam, they cannot go. Uh, illegally, not not like uh, uh, the case of uh, Thailand or or some other uh, Southeast Asia country. Um, yeah, so uh, yeah, so that is about the first question. Um, the the second question is about the book. Maybe Bao Wang want to 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 respond to that question. Uh, so the collection of history of both from women who migrate through irregular and regular channel as well. Uh, with the regular channels, the destinations mainly are Taiwan or Japan, where they have contracts. However, we and often uh, factory workers. Um, however, we find out that um, they, although they are they are better uh, guaranteed in in terms of uh, the income, the salary that they, they receive monthly, um, they, all, they still face um, and the journey abroad are safer because they can go through, through formal channels. They can travel through formal channels, but the living condition is poor um, and the working hours is very, very long and exhausting. And also they are not, the boss and the broker are also often, you know, working together so that they can cut off uh, whatever they can so that they don't pay the workers the full amount that, the, that they should receive. And even if they are legal, the, the law also stipulate that um, you are not allowed to, to take a, a broker fee uh, from these workers, but because they didn't know, they didn't know. So the brokers um, taking advantages of these uh, lack of information to um, ask for all sorts of fee and money and minus from their income, a minus a lot of money from their income against the law, but the workers didn't know, as well as um, the boss uh, and the employers, they also find ways to not paying the worker wherever they can, because the workers that doesn't have the language, they are shy in negotiating um, their, their, their contract, as well as if there is any issues, the worker, um, um, they are threatened to be sent back home. And they have the pressure because they, they take a loan in order to be able to go abroad. So they want to pay off their debt at least before they could come home. So the employers can use this to threaten them maybe to not pay them or to sack them or to send them home right away, right away, if they want to voice up. That's why many people doesn't dare to say anything, even if they know that they are not paid enough or they have to work very, very long hours. And it's the same for everyone. So even if uh, you go through a formal channel, it, it doesn't ensure that you are protected. Uh, so if the miss someone want to add on, uh, yeah, uh, about the methodology, how we collect the story. Um, <clears throat> in fact, we <clears throat> we encourage the women who participate in our project to write their own story, rather than through the interview. We uh, we have actually we this uh, this uh, book come from our um, initiative that's attached to another uh, project. Uh, we were have, uh, we we implementing the UN Women uh, project on uh, uh, gender based violence uh, to uh, migrant women. Uh, with this project, we uh, we did we conducted a baseline uh, survey, but from the survey we we got very little information. 
uh, because we interview people and, and women shy to talk, they don't want to disclose much. But when we uh, later on, when we uh, came up with our idea to encouraging uh, women to write their own story. So uh, we, we, we got more information and this, uh, there's a lot of sensitive information, but we, they didn't uh, want to share uh, during the interview with us. When they were they, when they 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 writing, they feel more comfortable. So so story of very unique and and very original. Um, so um, yeah, we um, uh, after receiving the written story, uh, we uh, sometimes we have to come back to the women to clarify some fact or some information, and in, and in, in, um, yeah. To, try to, to, to clarify if there's something uh, that make us confused. So, uh, and then we, we categorize the story into the different theme as you, you, you see. Um, and and uh, yeah, and then we, we, uh, we create our book uh, with those theme. Um, uh, regarding the question on ethnic minority, um, and um, um, and the question about uh, why in Japan um, the Vietnamese the worker uh, um, quite often come from one province or one region. Um, yeah, it's very interesting observation. Uh, ethnic minority in Vietnam are majority. Uh, a majority of ethnic minority people in Vietnam are poor people. Uh, they have uh, less education than than the majority Viet uh, people. Uh, so that's why they are not uh, eligible to go to the advanced destination like Japan or, or South Korea or Taiwan. So ethnic minority people from Vietnam uh, uh, mostly uh, go to work in Malaysia um, or in uh, in uh, some uh, construction in in uh, in the Middle East, like uh, in in uh, Saudi Arabia or, or some other country. Uh, very few, I don't think that uh, there's many ethnic minority people go to work in Japan or into. Uh, or, or to South, uh, South Korea or, or Taiwan. Um, regarding the, the issue, uh, does the, why um, in Japan the people come from one or quite few uh, provinces? It's because, um, it's interesting because the, um, some, uh, some, uh, um, Recruiting company, uh, they uh, tend to focus in some area. If they are successful with one province, uh, then they keep sticking to that province. Um, central uh, provinces of Vietnam, like Ha uh, Tinh, where we, where, where we did our project, uh, that's with women who, who share the story in the book, on the and. Uh, these uh, these uh, provinces, uh, people are very hardworking, very uh, strong. You know, sand eater mining, um, and and they have very hard life in their homeland, hometown. So that's why when they able to go out, they are very strong. You know, motivate motivated and work hard. Uh, so that's why they are recruited uh, more and more. And, and recruiting companies focus on those areas rather than other areas of Vietnam. Um, that is the, the, the response to the, that's the question. Um, you want to say anything about, about that? Uh, yeah, I think that's um, quite correct. And the, the ethnic minorities are often channeled into less favorable destination as well. For, for example, uh, in Saudi Arabia mm -hmm. and um, the connections with people at home, for example, if they got arrested or sent to deta detention camp are also very um, 
um, less disadvantaged than uh, kin, kin people. Um, and so there are cases when um, some ethnic minorities, uh, Vietnamese ethnic minority, they stay in detention camp for years on end without mm -hmm. anyone to come and bail them out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's question about the receiving a racism in receiving country. Um, yeah, of course, uh, our migrant worker uh, face uh, racism. Mm -hmm. uh, the story about uh, being stigmatized, being discriminated again um, in Japan in South uh, Korea, in, uh, in Europe, uh, in Russia, for example, uh, our migrant uh, worker uh, severely um, discriminated because many of them are irregular worker or, or, or cross border uh, illegally. They may go with the tourist visa and they stay over, they overstay. Uh, to work um, illegally for some Vietnamese, for the factory that owned by the Vietnamese in, in Russia, for, for example. Uh, so they are, uh, they are constantly abused by the police, you know, Russian police, uh, and they are also exploited by the Vietnamese bosses. Uh, they are uh, uh, harassed by the, by the local authority uh, in Russia and, and particularly police. Um, um, they, they, they have a very miserable life there in, in Russia. In, um, um, in, um, there's, there's a lot of story about the racism um, and it's blended with the with the discrimination because you you are coming from from the poor country, uh, from uh, you know uh, less uh, advantaged uh, country, so so um, so they are very uh, severely discriminated again. Um, 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 yeah, so it's about racism. Um, there's the story, a very sad story about, about us, but uh, it is rather sensitive. Uh, now, Aang, you may want to add anything about this? Yeah, like Miss Hong said, it's a very uh, intersectional kind of discrimination mm -hmm. um, because um, they work, uh, they, they are mainly unskilled labor. Um, they don't know the language. Uh, they need time to catch up with uh, everything else. And they often work a very, uh, you know, maybe 3 day job, um, dirty, demeaning, and uh, dangerous as well, um, as helper, as uh, domestic workers. And they may be looked down on by people at the uh, Aus country because um, they doesn't seem like they understand a lot. Um, mm -hmm. They seems like they are going there to, take the job of uh, people there <laughs> to uh, even like uh, some people who, who, who has a good working ability, they got a lot of jealousies and envy from people around because uh, they are being able to, to take on more shift, more income. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were discriminated against uh, by that as well, mm -hmm. uh, besides their language. And <clears throat> it's all linked together uh, into this whole image of, of, of um, low class, um, properly um, stupid, uh, and living outside of the law, who, uh, who depend on the economy without contributing anything, who mm -hmm. cause uh, disturbance because they go through a regular channel and they cause disturbance, they cause COVID contractions, they, cause, uh, they bring shame to the country. Uh, to um, and disturbance to the 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 social the society around them as you know like disorder um, they being narrated as 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 uh, something that that is disturbing rather than someone who are contributing their labor 
to the economic growth of the host country as well as send money back uh, mm -hmm. to um, improve the life at their, their sending country as well. So because of that, uh, yeah, there uh, it is um, <coughs> the, the changing of the narratives of, of, of migration of people migrating to foreign countries, especially those who are forced to migrate through irregular channels as well are important in order to debunk uh, these discrimination. Mm, so, yeah, there's this question about how can we change the narrative? Uh, in the receiving country, um, uh, I think uh, so. What we did uh, maybe um, to the rural um, on the rural to urban migration in Vietnam, we 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 work with um, the destination. Uh, we work with the community in the destination in the urban area, for example, and local authority uh, showing them the contribution of immigrant. Uh, they are poor, they are maybe um, ignorant, they may be uh, look not as decent as um, other people, but they they do the job that nobody want nobody in the in the urban area want to do. Uh, they do the 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 work that uh, have to you know clean up the city or, or uh, doing the the labor uh, manual job that nobody wants to do and to and they do the dangerous job that other people don't want to risk uh, their their life and time to to do so advocate uh, about the contribution of immigrant. Uh, 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 is one thing that we can we can do to 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 change the narrative and to to change the mindset of the people in the hosting country. Uh, is what we we did in our country about the rural urban um, migrant, but uh, in the in the destination in the receiving country, I think it's, it is what we we can do as well. Um, this the last question about um, how would we, uh, if we share the, the the book with our government and community uh, to to advocate for for improvement of policy, uh, the answer is the yes. We when we uh, complete the project, we uh, we do a dissemination a workshop inviting. Uh, representative from uh, government, different government agency. We inviting national media, and we inviting women who 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 share the story, to 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 share about their story. Uh, that's we we selected for the book, and we have a very very um, uh, vibrant uh, vibrant uh, dis discussion. Very interesting discussion. And people really appreciate the story that uh, they hardly ever um, hear or read uh, from any sources. So um, uh, we we also will uh, continue uh, uh, sharing uh, the book, disseminate the book, and working with uh, our government agency, particularly the Ministry of Labor, uh, Invalid and Social Affairs, who's in charge of uh, labor uh, exporting uh, policy and program in Vietnam uh, to, to, um, um, to uh, improve the policy and particularly uh, the support uh, program for uh, irregular worker um, because they are the most vulnerable group among the, the labor migrant from Vietnam. So thank you to both of you. Normally, uh, normally we finish in time, but this time I have uh, let it go because I think it's such very important what you are saying. We have two more questions actually, which are again, uh, mm -hmm. but we are not going to discuss today, but I want to just acknowledge 
Uh, one uh, refers to Taiwan about the issue of brokerage fees, because mm -hmm. according to Sen Nguyen, uh, this is the person asking, actually, according to Taiwanese law, is it possible to charge? Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, because the agent is providing uh, services and the other question refer more to reproductive health, which I know mm -hmm. is another mm -hmm. of our shared mm -hmm. uh, interest. Mm -hmm. And it's about the issue of women uh, migrants who cannot get pregnant. This is also in Singapore, by the way, in other mm -hmm. country. And the question mm -hmm. is, if there is a movement against this kind of uh, discrimination, clearly uh, abuse of human rights. But we don't have time to discuss it today, but we yeah. will have another section, as I said at the beginning, which will focus more on Europe, but some of this issue are also relevant. Mm -hmm. So we can come back uh, mm -hmm. to discuss this, uh, this question also. So it is going to be at the end of this amount, the exact date we will communicate uh, soon. Uh, but clearly there is a lot of interest for knowing more about Vietnam. We don't hear much mm -hmm. about migration in Vietnam, also in Southeast Asia, even in Thailand. Uh, mm -hmm. Like you are saying, there is quite a lot of migration, but mostly the focus is on Myanmar and Laos. Mm -hmm. uh, migrant and Cambodia and not so much about uh, Vietnam. So mm -hmm. it's very important to learn more and particularly about uh, women. Uh, so thank you to both of you uh, for uh, this very insightful uh, discussion. And the next time we will do one and a half hour <laughs> to allow uh, for more uh, question and ask when considering the interest uh, that uh, is clearly visible from the question we get. So once more, thank you. Thank you to our partner, Bobby and others of Guide the Way. And uh, again, I encourage everyone to read the book and to share it uh, with your uh, network and see you all at the end of this month. And once more, applause. We also had some ends put on. Thank you again to both of you. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.